going to show you how to make a cat's cradle square using the Cradle Grids Cat's Cradle Extra Large. This is actually a really cool ruler because it shows you basically what you need to cut. Gives you all the lines for the measurements. Um, you can make a variety of squares from four and a half inch square up to eight inch square. So to start, and I'll just show you what it looks like again. We're going to need just a little bit of fabric. You probably could use a couple quarter squares to, to make these squares and get a couple out of them. And I'm going to do a six inch square. So if I'm looking at the six inch, on the ruler, it tells me that I need to cut two three and three quarter squares, two three and three quarter by four and three quarter rectangles, and one seven inch by eight inch rectangle. So I've done that already. I just used a straight edge to do that. Here are my squares, or these are my two rectangles. And these are my two squares. And then here is the, the larger piece. So when you look at the finished block, this ends up being the larger piece. These are the two rectangles. And then this is your square piece. So when you're done, actually, with this one block, it'll end up turning to two. So you kind of get two for one with this. The first step to sewing these pieces together is to take right sides together of the square, put on top of the rectangle, repeat with the other one, and then you're going to sew a quarter inch seam on both of these. So I have already done that, sewing them together, and then you need to press the seams open. An easy way to do that is I always take the iron first. I like to heat up the, the sewing line first, and then I'm going to flip it open, but then I'm going to press the seam towards the larger of the two pieces, so pressing it towards the rectangle. Just give it a good pressing. If you like to use starch, you could starch it up a little bit too. I usually do that. Here's that second piece, which I've already kind of pre-pressed. So then you end up with the two longer rectangles. Then we're going to sew these two together. We're going to kind of flip them so they're opposite. And then we're going to sew them right sides together. Doesn't matter which edge, um, it'll turn out the same. So I'm just going to pick one. Um, you might want to pin it together a little bit. Then you're going to sew another quarter inch seam just along one of these sides. Then you end up with this piece. Now before we go and press the seams open, we're going to find the middle point of it just by folding in half. And then we're going to make a small clip all the way up to the sewing line. So I've already pre-clipped this. We do that because then your seams will fold the right way. So now I bring an iron back, heat up those sewing lines a little bit. And then when you fold it open, it kind of naturally falls to either side. You do want the seam towards the original rectangles here. And you're going to press it. Give it a good pressing. This one I'm going to starch a little bit because it's looking a little lumpy. I usually like to use the best press. I find that's kind of the cleanest, easiest starch to use. I don't leave a residue like some others. Okay, 
So once we have that pressed up, we're going to then finally use our tool. And we're going to use it to draw the sewing lines. You want to find the, it says place on seam line, it's a solid line. And then also has marked sewing line below. You're going to put that solid line right on the stitching line of one of the corners. So make sure that it is covering that. Then with a pencil, or you could use a quilter's pen. I like to use the pencil because I see it better and you're not going to see it in the end so you don't need to worry about it going away. I would just choose something that's not going to bleed on the fabric later on like a pen might. So that's your first sewing line. Flip it around. And this is the wrong side of fabric, just make sure you're doing that. Again, right on the sewing line, you're going to place the solid line there. And then I'm going to mark that. So you just marked two sewing lines. Now we right sides together, take our big rectangle, we're going to place it on. Carefully. Probably use a few pins just to secure it. And then you're just going to sew on each of the pencil lines. Make sure you stay on the lines though. Okay, so I've got that sewn. You can see my stitching lines, maybe not too well because the thread matches the fabric, um, but they're there. And now we need to cut these apart. So we have two blocks that we'll create with this. Okay, so now that we've sewn it, we're going to actually do a quarter inch um, from the sewing line towards the center here. Don't go on the other side because you're going to ruin your black. I'm probably just going to use my my straight edge quilting ruler. Make sure the you got a quarter inch seam allowance. That's the first one. Then I'm going to just make sure this one's a quarter inch as well. Now that we have these trimmed, we are going to press the seams again. And you're going to press the seam towards the largest piece, so the large triangle. This is where I like to use starch because I think it gets a little bit crisper. So it's almost looking like it's done. However, we need to trim it just a little bit more. So then we're going to go back to our ruler. And we're going to use this to give it a good trim. So essentially, we're doing the 6 inch one. So I'm going to line the 6 inch. There's a solid line for the 6 inch that happens to be the black line on there. The half inches have white lines. And then there's this dashed line. That should line up, line up with the seam of your square. So make sure this square is within the 6 inch square and then this line is on the seam. And then you just need to take your cutter 
Not really good with the other way. You can trim off that one side, flip it around, and then this one you don't have a square to line it up with, but you can use if those tips touch your other square and you're on the seam line with the dotted lines, it should work out pretty well. Trim that up. And then you've got your first one. And then just repeat that with your second one. So then you instantly have two squares. Thank you very much for watching. We'll have in the show notes the supplies you need and where you can find the ruler.